this morning we're we're going to look at Psalm 119 verses 9 to 16 and I was just encouraged again this morning as I was reading Psalm 119 and those verses of of just the magnitude of God's word and how precious his word is to us and so let's beginning by begin by reading Psalm 119 beginning in verse 9 and let me just go ahead and read through these uh, these eight verses, and then I want to come back and make some comments. Uh, good morning, Audrey. Good to see you on. I, I know you've been having some health issues. We're praying for you as well, Audrey. Good to see you on this morning. Verse 9, he begins with a question, How can a young man keep his way pure? By guarding it according to your word. With my whole heart I seek you. Let me not wander from your commandments. I have stored up your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Blessed are you, O Lord. Teach me your statutes. With my lips I declare all the rules of your mouth. In the way of your testimonies I delight as much as in all riches. I will meditate on your precepts and fix my eyes on your ways. I will delight in your statutes and I will not forget your word. He begins this phrase with the opening question, how can a young man keep his way pure? And I, I, that would apply to all of us. How can a young man or an old man, how can a young woman or a young woman uh, keep their way pure, keep their way right, keep their actions um, in, a, in accordance with the Word of God? And he gives the answer to this by guarding it according to your word, by, by guarding our way. When he says our way, he means our life, our manner of life. How can we keep our manner of life pure? And he says by guarding it according to God's word, by not only knowing the word of God, but applying the word of God in every instance, in, in every heart matter, of our life, to give consideration to the way of our life, and to give consideration in light of what God's Word has said. And God's Word applies to every area of our life. There's not an area of life that God's Word does not speak to. And granted, it doesn't answer every specific detail question. For instance, should I buy this car or not? But there are precepts in God's Word that will direct our paths and direct our lives in every situation. And then he says, with my whole heart I seek you. Let me not wander from your commandments. We spoke of this whole heart yesterday. In Jeremiah 29, we quoted that um, if you seek me with your whole heart, you'll find me and I will be there. And I'm reminded that, that some days we get up and our hearts are not in sync with God, uh, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. You know, those mornings when you wake up and, and it's just like, I'm, I've woken up ill-mannered, I've woken up just irritated. Um, and sometimes it's that residual carryover from the day before. And I find that I need to ask the Lord every single morning, God, would you, would you, Boy, would you purify my heart? Would you would you cleanse me from any unknown or unconscious sins that may be there? Any attitudes that are wrong? And I have to ask the Lord, God, God, change my heart this morning. Lord, renew my heart. And it reminded me of Psalm 51 when David prayed, "Create in me a new heart, O God." And so there is a chorus written to those words, "Create in me a clean heart, O God." And so. Right now, just pause. Let's pause right through our devotion. And let's make this song a prayer. God created me a clean heart. If the Holy Spirit brings anything to your mind that, that you need to acknowledge or confess, be quick to do that and acknowledge it. Create in me a clean heart. Spirit within me, create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit.
wash me not away from thy presence, O Lord. Take not thy Holy Spirit from me. sing that again. Create in me a clean heart. Create in me a clean heart. Oh God. And renew a right spirit within me. Create in me a clean heart. Oh goes on to say in the psalm not only that uh, that with his whole heart and then he prays God let me not wander from your commandments he says that he has stored up God's word in his heart that I might not sin against you and we talk a lot about scripture memorization and scripture memorization is, is so important that throughout the day God will bring to light uh, those those verses, those passages that we've stored up in our mind. And the Holy Spirit works in that uh, to prompt us to the, to the Word of God. Now, here he says, I've stored it up in my heart. I, I've taken it from my brain, and, and it's registered in my heart, that it's deep and it's settled there in my heart. And he says, this is a way that, that helps us to keep our way pure, to keep our way right by knowing God's Word. Blessed are you, O Lord. Teach me your statutes. And here he prays, God, not only teach me your word, but your statutes, those things that are a firm foundation, God, teach me those things. And we're reminded that it's the Holy Spirit that is engaged with the word of God to teach us his ways and his statutes in a sense that they just become second nature or they really become first nature that the Word of God is so permeated into our hearts and our, and our lives that it will direct our paths and direct our ways. We're reminded that uh, as Paul wrote to the Corinthians in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14, he said that the natural man does not understand or cannot understand the things of the Spirit of God, uh, nor can they accept them because the things of God, the Word of God, are spiritually discerned. And it requires the Holy Spirit um, to help us to understand and know the truth of the Word of God. And I've seen a mark in, in people that I know that are born again. They have a desire to know the Word of God. They have a desire to not only know the Word of God, but to obey the Word of God. And so one of the marks in a person's life that they are truly born again is that we have a desire to 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 live according to the Word of God. And we're, we're so reminded that we can't do that in our own abilities, in our flesh, but it requires the Holy Spirit. That's why Paul tells us in Ephesians to, to walk in the Spirit, uh, continually be filled with the Holy Spirit of God. He goes on to write, um, with my lips I declare all the rules of your mouth. I want us to notice something, that he, he calls on every part of our being to be a part, to be in tune with the Word of God. 
He calls our way, our, our actions to be lined up with the Word of God. He, he calls our heart to be in tune with the Word of God. And now he tells us to use our lips to declare the praises of God. It's a good practice to read the Word of God aloud. It's a good practice to, to quote Scripture aloud. It's a good practice to share with one another in the body of Christ the words of God. And so he says, with my lips, and in the way of your testimonies, I delight as much as in all riches, as much as I would delight in, in the riches, the, the things that I might have in life. God, I desire your word. I delight in your word even more. Verse 15, I will meditate. I'll contemplate your precepts. I'll mull them over in my mind. And I'll fix my eyes on your ways. I will delight in your statutes. I will not forget your word. Again, he tells us to engage every bit of our being in the word of God. With our way of life, with our heart, engage our mind in the word of God. And with our lips, declare the word of God. As I was thinking of that verse... There was a hymn that came to my mind. I love to tell the story. And can I tell you this, that, that when we tell the story of God's goodness and his grace and his mercies, he reestablishes that in our lives. He affirms to us our salvation and our place in relationship to him. And so I want to encourage you sometime today, tell the story. Tell the story how God saved you. Tell the story how God has kept you. Tell the story how God's grace has been prevalent and is prevalent every moment and every day in your life. Let's sing this song. I love to tell the story of unseen things above. Of Jesus and His glory. Of Jesus and His love. I love to tell the story because I know it is true. It satisfies my longing as nothing else can do. I love to tell the story to be my theme and glory. To tell the old, old story of Jesus and his love. I love to tell the story, more wonderful it seems, than all the golden fancies of all our golden dreams. I love to tell the story It did so much for me And that is just the reason I tell it now to thee I love to tell the story To be my theme Tell the story today. And if there's nobody around to tell the story, tell yourself the story. Tell yourself how Jesus saved you. Uh, tell him how wonderful his love is. Tell him thank you that his blood has cleansed you from all of your sin. And that you have a hope of eternality with him. That your hope is not in this world. That your hope is in him. I pray the Lord blesses you. I pray that you have a great weekend. 
Uh, I want to encourage you to be either engaged with us in person on Sunday morning if you feel so comfortable to do that, or engage with us online. I know it's not the same, uh, but make it a point to gather your family together. Uh, make it a point to create a watch party on Facebook to share it with your friends, to invite them to hear that story this Sunday morning. I love you. I pray God's blessings on you. Have a great day.